washing the pears. Okay, well this is my uh, little pear container and I managed to find a few pears out there on the pear tree. And so what I did is I filled it up with water and uh, so I swirled it around and uh, you're getting all the, the stuff in, you know, washed off of it. I've got my apples here. <clears throat> I've already been through um, a few of these. And so I found it's good to take the, the uh, excuse me, I, I said apples, these are pears. <clears throat> but take them, quarter them, and cut off the, uh, the little pieces, uh, the dark pieces that are undesirable. Now I'm, I'm leaving the seeds in there. Uh, I know it'll supposedly give it more tannins, but uh, that's okay. So I've, uh, I've, I've experimented a little bit, and I found that here's a, a good way to go about the grinding. And let me just re review the grinder they've got here. This is a garbage disposal, and it has a down tube right here that goes straight into our bucket. And you can see uh, some of the stuff I've been grinding already. I've uh, rigged up an on-off switch over here to make it easy. So uh, let's grind. It's good to put one in at a time and have another one right behind it to prevent splatter. And then you can see as it dries, we'll get some out there. Pressing the cider pulp. This setup was crafted from things I already had around the shop. This is a form that I made from 2x4s for pressing the pear pulp. Next, I'll use the cheesecloth that I got at the local homebrew store to line the form. Place it on top, tuck it in on the corners, and then we'll scoop the pear pulp into the form. By the way, all the wood that I use is food compatible not chemically treated, and I made sure to wash it thoroughly. So now I'll fold the cheesecloth on top of the pear pulp. This will keep the, the pear pulp from squeezing through once we put the pressure to it. Now, uh, if you look closely, you can see the pear cider already flowing. Now I'll remove the form and press the, place the pressing plate on top. That much complete. Now I just need something to press it with. That seemed to work well. I started with a seven gallon bucket with about six gallons of pear pulp and after the squeeze process ended up with about three and a half gallons of pear juice. That's nearly 50% yield and then the remainder of the pulp went into the compost heap. Sorry for the video downtime but copyright police deleted the original video because they could hear a song playing in the background. People seem to like the video, so here it is again. Now we have our cider press, and uh, it came out a little bit browner than I was uh, expecting. It, it's uh, This is pear cider, so anyway, this is what we got. Now, <clears throat> the recipe calls for about for one gallon of juice to uh, add one pound of sugar. So this is a 10 pound sack, so I'm just going to ballpark adding half this bag. So to that end, uh, here we go. Alright, there we are. Next ingredient is the yeast. And this is a Red Star yeast that I got from the uh, homebrew shop. <clears throat> so, here we go. Now the the uh, some of the uh, 
uh, guides that I see, they say that when you add yeast, you should take a stick and give it one swirl of the stick to mix it. Of course, other ones I've seen, they say you grab the whole bottle and you shake it. So, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know one from another, but I guess uh, a swirl is going to be probably a good, good thing to do. So there we are. And the next thing is uh, attach our clean, uh, bacteria-free vapor lock. And voila, we let it brew. Update on fermentation. Uh, the fermentation seems to be going very uh, strong right now. As you can see, the swirling bubbles in there, and then also the vapor lock is clicking away at pretty good speed. Um, yeah, this is uh, one thing. This is the reason I put it in a sink because uh, in the past I've seen where cider would it would just boil over because uh, if the bubbles if it starts getting too much viscosity, it'll make sticky bubbles that'll go up and actually get into the vapor lock and it'll uh, start causing it to flow over and you'll get the sides of the container of the carboy all coated with uh, sticky uh, bubbly goo from the fermentation. Pear cider. All right, I think it's finished now. Let's have a look. This is the carboy. And you can see, uh, well, maybe maybe you can't see that well, but this is uh, pretty clear here now. We have a lot of uh, sediment down in the bottom. Uh, it seems to have settled out quite a bit. And you can see on the side of the glass where the during fermentation, the bubbles came up uh, high over here. So after, uh, I thought it was going to ferment for quite a while, but it only seemed to take like one weekend to, to totally ferment out and quit bubbling. But uh, I left it here for about another two weeks in order to let it settle out. So, next step, bottling. Uh, to that end, <clears throat> I have uh, freshly sanitized bottle caps. We have a funnel and uh, also the other equipment here. This is going to be a... Uh, we're going to uh, put our priming sugar in there. We're going to rack it in there and then put our priming sugar in there. And from there, we're going to go put it into the bottles. All right. Now we have the uh, cider is being racked. We're, we're racking it out this tube and it's going into this other bucket. I have a little clip here I bought from the homebrew store. It comes in very handy because uh, this, this uh, tube tends to uh, be hard to handle. If, if you don't have that clip, then you have to stand there and hold it. And so this is very, very handy. Um, and, and you want to keep it off the bottom of the fermentation tank to keep from picking up the sediment from the bottom that this stuff is settled out. So we just get nice clear brew in there. Um, so uh, we're going to transfer this into this bucket and then we're going to uh, add the priming sugar and then from there then we'll go ahead and bottle it. All right, now we're getting to bottling. And uh, what I did is I racked all of the pear juice into this container, added about two cups of sugar for priming, and I have this uh, tube right here which goes to a bottling wand. And uh, this is a really neat device. It's got a little button on the end that, that when you press it down like this, then it lets the fluid flow. Otherwise, it shuts it off. So we fill one bottle at a time. Just like that, hold it down until it fills up. And then move on to the next bottle. And uh, just to, for time's sake, I'll show you the cap. So we take a sterilized cap, put it on there, right in our capper, and then give a good press. That's it. Bottle cider.